Good morning, children of the Most High. This is Brother Chukemika. Okay, um, first of all, let me apologize for my videos not being very frequent. In my last video, I enjoined brothers and sisters to prepare for the red decade because what these demons have planned for us is unimaginable. And I want to reiterate that to the brothers and sisters. Um, I do like the idea that people are coming out and speaking up because speaking up is one of the ways to expose these demons and these demons they don't live in, in daylight. Once you expose them, you are, you are almost halfway into conquering them. And you also expose the humanity, the humans that are joining them. Like I said, I don't consider these people humans and they are not, to be honest, they, they are really not. Why else would they want to wipe out the population of humans if they are humans? Anyway, uh, in that light, I want to. Uh, I'm really appreciative of the Nigerian government when the um, when the United uh, World Health Organization announced that they were suspending the chloroquine study. Everyone knows. Anyone who has a little bit of brain knows that this disease, this so-called COVID-19, is just fever. It's just the common cold and fever. And as such, a malaria drug can take care of it. So the United Nations launched a study after so much pressure, especially by the French government. The French researchers have been calling for this, have been saying how they have used chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, to cure this disease for thousands of patients. Eventually, the United Nations launched, launched uh, uh, an investigation, a study into the use of chloroquine for COVID-19. And then, all of a sudden, one fictitious report came out and was published in The Lancet. Uh, the report was from a company called, is it Digisphere or something? I don't, I don't remember the name of this fictitious company. And when this report came out, people started digging into the company, a company that literally did not exist they mentioned about six to about three to six workers, and it was found out that one of the so-called workers was actually a porn star or something like that. I, I, I don't know, a pool dancer or something. So you find that these are fictitious reports. Probably someone sitting down in a place in Haifa or Tel Aviv or Dimona and writing nonsense, saying they have access to almost all the medical records of COVID-19 patients all over the world. How? How, what kind of resources do you need to have to have that? But that's what this fictitious company claimed to have. And because of their study, the United Nations and now the World Health Organization announced that they were suspending the chloroquine study. And that's why I thank God for the Nigerian government. The Nigerian Minister of Health said, no, we are not joining you that. We will continue with the chloroquine study because chloroquine is showing very good, very good sign for those people who we are trying it on. And, and take a look at the numbers, the Nigerian numbers. Look at this number in green. These are people that have been discharged. 4,200 people. There is no cure for this so-called fictitious disease. But 4,200 people have been discharged. And that's from the malaria drug, the chloroquine we give them. So it doesn't make sense that anyone will want to suspend that. Look at the number of deaths. 365, which is very, very funny. Anybody knows that this... Just look at the ratio of present number, present day number to previous day number for the statistics for most states, as well as the, the, death, the death rate. You see that these people are just making this stuff up. Look at River State, for instance. Before Amethi started doing his uh, gra, gra that he's shutting down the whole place, King Amethi walking down the whole River State, commanding people to be taken to the uh, uh, detention center. There was just two deaths, two, in River State. Now, with all Amity's, uh, weak, I'm sorry, not Amity, weak, weak case lockdown and everything, now the death is 21. So is the lockdown killing more people? Obviously, that's what the number says. Of course, they're making this number. So weak uh, is also gunning for the Bill Gates money. And that's the truth. Everybody is gunning for Bill Gates money. Even Kogi State that never had a number. Now we have Kogi, three people. And Ambra has reported one dead from from uh, coronavirus. Really? <laughs> Who is that person that died? We don't know. 
And then you look at the statistics, you find that the corona does not act the same in every case. For instance, a river state has a, um, and let's, let's look at this situation. Um, Abia State has almost a hundred, zero deaths. You may have 52 and seven deaths. What's the percentage of deaths in that? Someone has half, half the number Abia State has and seven deaths. Abia State has zero. Their immune system must be tam-tam in, in Abia State. So, if I read this disease does not act uniformly in the same way all over the place, people are just making up these numbers. You can't make this stuff up. Anyway, that's not what I want to talk about today. I just thank God that people are coming out and challenging it. And I also thank God that at least the Nigerian government showed some sort of balls to go against the World Health Organization. We should go against these people. We know at the back of our mind, no matter how much this people give us, we know their intention is not good for us. We know that. And so, we either die on our knees or we die standing up. Okay? And how can we, how can we, how can we just allow this people to steamroll us like that? We should be to stand to them and say, look, you know what, let's try our own medication first and see what, where that gets us. COVID is not what I'm going to discuss today, so let me just um, take you there. For those of you who have been following my channel, you know that there are things I've said before, and I keep repeating them, and even though they may not be popular, I keep saying them. Because the products of my research have shown that this is what happened in Igbo land. For instance, I saw this, uh, somebody sent me a link to this website two weeks ago. It's called A Mighty Tree. Actually, it's called A Mighty Tree Has Fallen, which is very sad if you think of it. Okosisi. Now, it talks about the kingship in Igbo land, and most times they use Onitra. For those of you who don't know, Onitra is not really Igbo, to be honest, but it was the meeting point of the missionaries and the, the so-called missionaries and the Europeans that came to Igbo land. Onitra seems to be the meeting point, so they just called all of us Igbo. Even though, if you read the book of um, Thomas Basden, the locals, that people from Obosi, people from Bo, were telling them that, look, Onitra people are not necessarily Igbos. They are not the same tribe. And he told them that they don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, we'll talk about Basdom and Rabi. But this book was written by M.W.D. Jeffreys in 1934. And it talks about the divine Omori kings. The Omori are children of God from the Eri, uh, Eri lineage. And so they are the kingmakers in Igbo land. Of course, the first kingmakers in Igbo land in those days. This might be a little bit different from the Aro area because the Aros are mainly children of Benjamin and Judah who were who came in later to Igbo land from the Middle East. And I've discussed this a number of times in my videos. But what I want what I want to point out here to the children of the Most High is something that's said in this book which synchronized with what I've been saying since the beginning of this ministry. Last week was the first time I ever saw this. I've never read this book. When I did the research to start this ministry, most of the research I did was mainly oral. It was oral research. So I went out there, I spoke to people, I talked to our ancient of these, and I got the knowledge they gave me. Okay? And that's why I always encourage brothers and sisters, go out there and talk to people. Why they are still alive, prove me right or wrong. But today, I've been saying a number of things, and today you see it here, written as early as 1934. I wasn't born 1934. My parents weren't born then, okay? But it synchronizes with what I've been saying from oral research from amongst our people. Okay, so let me go down and explain that. It talks about the pantheon, the gods in Igbo land. The pantheon means the hierarchy of the gods in Igbo land, okay? And this is also discussed in the Bible. This is also discussed in the book of Enoch. Um, for instance, in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the Most High who sits down in the throne above. And the way it describes the Most High is that it's bright as the sun. His throne is as bright as the sun and everything. And then it talks about the 24 elders that sit below that, the next level. And those 24 elders are always saying, Alleluia, Alleluia, you know. That's the book of Revelation. 
in the book of Enoch, it even goes into details and talks about the Most High and the uh, that sits on the throne as bright as the sun. And then it talks about the, and you can see this on the first, in the book of Enoch, chapter 19, basically. So from chapter 19 to chapter 21, this is, in fact, if you read from chapter 10, in Enoch chapter 10 to chapter 21, these things were clearly described. Now, it talks about, after the level of the Most High, you come back to the level of the angels and the archangels, angels that are in charge of uh, Tartarus, angels that are in charge of human affairs, angels that are messengers, basically from the Most High. Then it talks about the elders as well. You know, also talks about that. So, f- for those of you who don't know, these are the pantheon of gods in Igbo land. There may be different variations or dip- different knowledge based on the person you ask, but this is just the level of gods in Igbo land from number one to number four. The number one or the first level of gods in Igbo land is the Chuku, which is Chuku means Chi Uku. The great God. You understand? Basically, means the most high God. That's what Chuku means. It's, a, it's an adjective that describes somebody, and that's the great God. And in Igbo land, that great God, Chuku, is represented by Anyangu and Abwala. Anyangu means son, and Abwala is considered the messenger of Anyangu. So, in my, in my own understanding, Nagbala, of course, represents the angels and the archangels, which are messengers of the Most High. Remember, brothers and sisters, I told you that the Bible said, what did the Bible say about the Most High? He sits on a throne as bright as the sun. His garments as bright as the sun. Anything as bright as the sun. What is that telling you? The Bible clearly is telling you that the Most High is represented by the Son. This is even clear in the book of Enoch. The Son is not described anywhere in the celestial characters, except by saying that the garment, the throne of the Most High, is as bright as the Sun. I mean, if you look up there, there are no two suns, okay? Forget all this thing that I tell you that you go to this planet or the other planet. There's just one Sun. So, if they're talking about something, it has to be this one. Okay. Now, if you read the book of Allah, the Quran, the, uh, I'm sorry, in the book of Elizabeth ECH, she mentioned that there are evidence that pre 17th century Hebrews were monotheists. They worship one God. This is it's very important to take note of these things. Elizabeth ECH mentioned that there's evidence of monotheism in Igbo land, especially pre-17th century. If you look at the book of Ola the Kwan, he said that we worship a God that lives in the sun. That we believe he doesn't eat any food, but that he smokes a pipe. That's the way they imagine God. A God it was imagined as he should be imagined, a black man that looks like an elder that smokes a pipe. And doesn't eat. I has a kettle around his waist. This is the way the eleven-year-old all out of one described the God that the Igbos believe in in the seventeenth century. But the most modern thing he said is that this God lives in the sun. So the Igbos have always known that the sun is the center of our solar system. We've always known that. And this synchronizes with the Bible telling you that the garment of the Musa is the sun, that the throne of the Musa is the sun. I mean, it can't be clearer than that. Here you see it, Chuku, the first level of God in Igbo land is Chuku, and that is represented by the sun and Abwala. And Abwala, of course, are the messengers of Chuku, which clearly represents the angels and the archangels. Now, the second one is what they call Ndichi. Ndichi means the elders. The ancestors, yes, the ancestors in Igbo land are revered. They are not worshipped for people who say oh, we are doing ancestral worship, ancestral worship. I don't say anything wrong with that. Our ancestors are, we believe they are with us. We believe they are within reach of us. That's our belief. I don't care what the Chinese or the Americans believe. This is our own. 
That's the next level of belief in Ibo land. We believe that those who have lived a righteous life and those who died a righteous death, they ascend to the level of Ndichi. It's generally believed that those who are Nze and Ozo, when they die, they ascend to the level of Ndichi. In those days, as you all know, brothers and sisters, anybody cannot just walk in and become Nze and Ozo. You have to be a reputable member of the society. You have to be just. You have to be fair. And you have to be extremely righteous before you are considered worthy of being conferred the title of an Nze or Ozo. Today, anybody that go and steal money or kidnap somebody and bring money will just go and be also. It doesn't work that way. This is a revered position because when you are an user and also, it means that when you pass on to the great beyond, you pass on to the level of Ndi Chie, which is the second hierarchy of the gods in Igbo theology. Ndi Chie is also stated in the Bible when it talks about the 24 elders sitting be beside the throne, singing hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible tells you that after the throne of the Mosa, you have the level of the elders. That's what we have here in Ibo land. After the Mosa, the level of the Mosa and the angels, you now have the elders, the ancestors. This is very important. This is what our ancestors have always believed. And it's important that we are treated here. It's in sync with what the Bible says. It's in sync with what the book of Enoch say. Okay? And that is why in the book of Exod uh, Genesis chapter 15 when the Most High told Abraham that he's going to die, he said you will descend, you will ascend with your fathers, you will rest with your fathers. That means Abraham will join the level of ancestors. Abraham is not going to come for you and God to begin to play ping pong. No. He will join the level of the ancestors. Then the next level of the gods in Ibolan is the Alosi. And this is why I actually want to do this video because you see what this man explained about Alosi. In fact, let's go to it here. He says, number three, Alosi or Aroshi are innumerable, have been introduced from other towns, are always represented by calf wooden human figures, male or female. What I don't know. This is what I've been saying since the inception of this ministry. Alosi is not originally Igbo. Alosi means Alosi, where the origin of abomination. That is where our problem started. Brothers and sisters, all these Alosi started coming to Igbo, and people started bringing it to fortify themselves during slavery because they were afraid of being taken slave. This is a product of the slave trade in Igbo. It was never part of our community. Look at what it says here. Alosi are innumerable. They are everywhere in Nibu land. And have been introduced from other towns. 1934, somebody is telling you that. These things are not in Nibu before. And how do you know an Alosi? It has wooden carving. Male or female or anything. That's an Alosi. The most high, the level of Chuku, Anyangu and Abala and Ndichi, they don't have any carving. There is no carving. To represent them. Don't take that from me. Let's look at what he explained about Chuku here. In number one, Chuku, which is represented by Anyangu and Abala, is it no Unku, no Ogu to represent them. What is Unku? Unku is a wood. Wood. There's no Ogu. Ogu is a carving to represent them. There is none of that to represent them. Is it? But mounds of earth are used as altars. Let me say it again. No Unku, no Ogu to represent Chuku and Abal, uh, Anyangu and Abal. But mounds of earth are used as altars. Mounds of earth. Does that sound familiar? Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 20. From Exodus chapter 20, KJV, and we look at from verse 24. It said, from verse 23, what did the Most High tell us? He said, Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. The Most High said, Don't carve anything, don't mold anything to represent me. 
Even though, that's why what you have now in the Vatican and the Catholic Church, the most I said, do not carve any of this nonsense to represent me. In verse 24, he said, An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy bond offering and thy peace offering, thy sheep and thy oxen, in all places where I record my name. I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. The most I say, don't carve anything for me. Don't carve nothing. Just make an altar of the earth. Don't even design it or anything. Make an altar of the earth. That's where you offer your sacrifices. For me. That's all. Oh, good child. We don't go and build these elaborate churches that these thieves, that call themselves pastors, are doing now. And it says in verse 25, says, And if thou will make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hidden stone. For if thou lift up thy two upon it, thou hast polluted it. If you don't see earth, let's say you have sandy soil where you cannot put earth together. You can make stones, you put stones together, but it must not be here, it must not be cemented. Because once you put tools on the altar, you have polluted the altar. The most I will never be there. How many people would go to church today with marbles? Altar. Marbles. And tell me the most I will go and stay there. He's not there. No, he's not. Neither shall thou go up by steps unto thy altar, that thy nakedness not be discovered there. The altar should not have steps. You go to the all over the church, you climb steps. When I was an altar boy in Catholic Church, some altars you climb steps, climb steps, you go tired. The most I say we shouldn't do that. Exodus chapter 20 from verse 23 to 26. Now, let me show you something. How does, it, how does it feel to see this? How does it feel to see this? An altar of earth, that should not make any image of silver or gold or nothing for me, but just make an altar of earth, that shall make unto me, and shall sacrifice thereon. That is what the most I told Moses in Exodus 20, verse 24. And then you come here, a white man writing about our people. These are people that are accusing our people of all kinds of immorality. This is what he wrote about what we do to Chuku, our God, the great God. He said, no unku, no images, no ogu, nothing to represent our God. We have not, no such thing. All we have is just mount of earth and we use this as altars. And only a foreholder, that is a titled man, can use this word as a preamble to prayer. Any titled man in his yard, at least one mount of earth, Dedicated either to Anyango or Abuala, but not to Chuku. Like I said, Chuku is an adjective that describes the most high, which is represented by Anyango and Abuala. And in any title man's house you go to, you see, you will see at least one mound of earth that represents Anyango and Abuala. Or Abuala, anyone. But mound of earth, that's what represents that. You see, um, these two are the same as Chuku. That's, that's what they, they are both representing Chuku. But in one Umuna, it was said that the sun is under Chuku. So we're not really worshipping the sun per se. Like Olaoda said, we worship a God that's represented by the sun. A God that lives in the sun. I know scientists will tell you that the sun is just nuclear power exploding. No, so Nuclear power that will explode and go, and go to rest in the evening and come wake up in the morning and start exploding. That's how nuclear power works. One of them. It says the sun is under Chuku, worship because it has heat and power. Then it says Chi, spoken of in everyday parlance, is the sun. For instance, they say Kachifu, which means let day break. You understand? This is what we use in everyday parlance. It shows that we we understand the sun to represent our God, even in our everyday speech. Okay, let me show you something to the most high because. This is an Igbo compound. This is a picture that was taken, I think it was taken from um, the book of Thomas Basden. It was taken from the book of Thomas Basden. You can just Google ancient Igbo architecture, Igbo compound, to see this. This is an Igbo compound, usually a compound of a title holder. When I was growing up, there were a number of compounds that were like this in Igbo land. This is very, very nostalgic, to be honest with you. Just seeing this reminds me of those good old days. 
in Igbo land. You have trees. These trees are called ogilishi. Ogilishi trees. They are usually laid down next to where you're offering sacrifices. And they bring out the nectar in the morning that is very, very succulent. And then, what do you see here, children of God? You see mounds of earth used as altar. So you can guess, looking at the size of this compound, you can guess that there are a number of people that live in this compound. So maybe three elders live, live in this compound, and each of them have their own mounds of earth that's used as altar. This is an able compound. These people are keeping the laws of God. You that are going to judge or not. Thank God for these people. Because these are the people that kept the commandments of the Most High. This is the, this is the Mount of Earth in Igbo compound. And there are so many other compounds like this too in Igbo land. Let me show you something else. Because actually this is the third thick of this video. I'm trying to make sure it's not that long, but it is. Because I need to explain everything. I said, according to this book that was written, the pantheon of the gods in Igbo belief, at the first level you have Chuku, which is represented by the sun, and Abala. And Abala is recognized as a messenger of the sun. But both of them are represented at the same level. And I'll show you that. Then the next level you have the Ndichi. Ndichi means the elders, the ancestors. Then of course, Later on, you have the Halosi and the Mo. These are the level of gods in Igbo land. So, this is what the Igbos believe. Let me now, let's read this from the Bible and the book of Enoch for you to see that it is the exact same thing. Exact same thing. First of all, let's look at the Bible. Let's look at the Bible. It says, uh, Revelation chapter 4. Let's look at what it says. It says, Let's start from chapter uh, verse 2. It said, And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone. What does that say? It said, The God who sat on the throne, his color, he, to look, if you look at him, he looks like jasper and sardine stone. Okay, brothers and sisters, this is jasper and sardine stone. In the when you look at it too, this is Jasper and Sardin Stone. You know what Does this look like a white man on the throne? Is this not a black man's skin color? So if you imagine God and you imagine a white man with long beard, beard like this one, whatever they are drawing here, uh, you don't enter one chance. So that's not that's wrong. You are that's the devil, that's the demon. Because God has the color of Jasper and Sardin Stone, which is black skin. That is the original color of the Most High. And you can see here, they've tried to polish the stone so that it will look a little bit white, but it's yes. not. So, let's go back to the Bible. It says, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow around about the throne. Rainbow. What produces rainbow? Is it not the sun? But let's go ahead. It says, now, below, around about the throne was four and twenty seats, upon which, upon the seat I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Do you know you see that? First of all, on the throne is the Most High, who sat there, and a black man's skin on the throne. Then, the next level is the level of the twenty-four elders. This is exactly what our ancestors believe. We have, first of all, the Most High, Chuku, represented by the Sun, and the next level is Ndichi. That's what you're seeing here in the book of Revelation. You have the throne and the one that sits on the throne. The next level is 24 elders. Okay. Let's explain it further in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation said about that throne, he said, he held a right in his right hand seven waters and a sharp double-edged sword came from his mouth. His face was like the sun shining at its brightest. The face of the Most High was like a sun shining at its brightest. This is the book of Revelation. This is the book of Revelation describing the Most High as shining as the sun. 
In fact, there are other Bible verses where you can get the Most High described as the Son. Let's get it here. This is eight, uh, eight Bible verses. Eight Bible verses about God likened to the Son. Let's start here in the book of Malachi. It says, Malachi 4 2 says, But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings and you will go forth and skip about like calves from the stall. In the book of Luke, it's right there. In the book of Psalm 84 11, it says, For the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good things are seen with you from those who walk uprightly. Psalm 84, the Lord God is a Guinea son. Okay. The Igbos believe that our God lives in the Guinea son, Anyang. Okay. Let's keep going. And the book of Habakkuk is there, and the book of Isaiah. These are eight verses where the Most High was likened to a son. We have already talked about Revelation chapter 1 and verse 16. Now, it's not only the Most High that is likened to the Son. The Most High is also comfortable with his angels and archangels to look like him, to also look like the Son. And the Bible described them that way. Now, let's go to the book of the, the, the book of Revelations again. Okay? Revelation chapter 10, in verse 1, it says, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven. It's not only the most high that is described as the sun. Sometimes the angels and the archangels are also described to have that feeling. And that is why our ancestors here put God, Chuk and Abala, who is the messenger of God, on the same level. Anyangu and Abala. And they tell you that Abala is seen sometimes as a messenger of Anyangu. But they are the same level, the first level of God in Hebrew language. Let's see how the Bible puts that together. In Revelation chapter 10, verse 1, an angel, we have seen when the Most High was described as the Son in different parts of the Bible, from the Old to the New Testament. Now, you will also see in the book of Revelation that an angel was also described as the Son. It says, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. Revelation chapter 10 here, an angel is also described as the sun. So that's why in our tradition, the most high and the angel are put on the same level, even though we know that the angels are messengers of the most high. But the most high is very comfortable sharing his throne with the only one. Okay. Now let me read from the book of Enoch. This same pantheon of of the of the of gods in Ebo land. We have, you see, first of all, you have Chuku, which is Anyangu and Abala. You have the elders, Alusi and more. Let's read what the book of Enoch describes is the pantheon of heaven. Let's go to Enoch chapter 14, okay? Enoch chapter 14. And then we read from verse 20. Enoch chapter 14, verse 20, it says, And he who is great in glory sat on the throne, and his raiment shone more brightly than the sun, as his clothes were shining as bright, brightly than the sun, and was whiter than any snow. Verse 21. None of the angels could enter or could behold his face because of the magnificence and glory, and no flesh could behold him. Verse 22, the sea of fire surrounded him, and a great fire stood in front of him, and no one could draw close to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, but he needed no holy counsel. Then, verse 23, he said, the most holy ones who were near him did not live night or day. That is the indeed here, that is the ancestors Enoch is talking about. First of all, you have the most high sitting down, and nobody could see him, nobody could touch him, nobody could come near him. But those who were near him, Enoch described as the most holy ones. These are the elders, the level of the elders. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, go and read it. You have the Bible. The Bible. You have someone in 1934 telling you 
that the Igbos believe in Chuku, who is represented by Anyangu, that is the son, and Abala. Abala is the plethora of angels who are messengers to Anyangu, that is the son, or messengers to the Most High. Then below that level, you have the Nidichir or the ancestors. And you see the same thing in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, we've seen clearly that you have the, in Revelation chapter 4, you see the Most High on the throne, and after that, you see the level of the elders. The Bible says they are 24, but of course, they are much more than 24. And then after that, you have Alosi and Mok, which are not what the Most High commanded us to do. And these two levels also, you see them in the book of Enoch. You have a throne, and then you see the most holy ones, as Enoch called them. These are the levels of the ancestors sitting near the Most High. You cannot make this stuff up. You cannot have this coincidence, three different accounts telling you the same thing. And that's what our ancestors believed. Now, children of God, this is the part that's going to interest you. For those of you who follow my channel, I did a video on the true name of God hidden in plain sight. And, and if you've not seen that video, please go and see it. It's very important. And for those who have seen that video, what did I say is the name of the Most High? The true name of the Most High is Aya. The biblical interpretation of the true name of the Most High is Gene, Aya. What is the name of the Son in Igbo language? Anyangu. The name Anyangu and the name Aya is very similar. The name Anyangu and the name Aya is very similar. Remember, most Hebrew words are end with the, the, the end with um, vowels. For instance, um, Netanyahu. You see that the name Netanyahu, which is not uh, you know is not this criminal and Israel's real name. His real name is Milukovsky, but they started taking up Hebrew names to, because they've stolen our identity. But his real name is, of course, is Milukovsky, and then he stole our name and it's called it Netanyahu. The name Anya or Anyahu and the name Aya or Ayahu is very, very similar. That's why when the Hebrews tell you that we worship a God that lives in the sun, they know what they are talking about. They are not worshipping idol. They are worshipping the God of Abraham. You just don't know it. And you see ignorant people making all kinds of noise, but they don't know. So I want that to sink in, brothers and sisters. There's a reason the name of the Most High is Aya. And there's a reason the Hebrews worship a God that lives in a place they call Ayahu, which is the sun. And I've given you a plethora of biblical quotations that mentions this. So I want to point this out. This is what a white man wrote about our people. These people, again, the, the, ministers, the missionaries, so called missionaries that came here, they weren't kind. To our people, they weren't. Most of them wrote that people were just so evil and wicked and lazy and blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, they couldn't hide the fact that our life was 100% biblical. Remember, they told us to stop this. When they started their Christianity in our community, they told us, they convinced people to go and destroy these things. Even though they knew fully well that this is biblical, they convinced people to go and destroy these places. So, uh, um, it's not like I am looking for um, collaboration here, but the truth is that it's, it's nice when it happens. It's nice when things come together, you understand? Then, then the fourth level, of course, is more, more means ghosts or spirits of the dead, okay? These levels, Alosi and more, this is what the Bible said we shouldn't double into. Let there be none among you who is practicing divination of spirits. That is what more means. It means ego more, divination of spirits. We shouldn't do that. Okay? Let there be no images of carving of anything in heaven or earth or anything. That's what the Bible says we shouldn't do. And our ancestors were not doing that until the events happened and people were bringing Adoshi from all over the place. So when we go to the village now, this is what most people see, Adoshi. They don't see Ndichi. They don't see Chuku, Anyangu, and Abala. They don't. They don't ask themselves, why do people bear names 
and now why do people do that? They don't. All they see is hello and they say, oh, we are idol worshippers, idol worshippers. No, we are not idol worshippers. Okay? This, whoever owns this compound was not worshipping idol. Okay? He was worshipping the most high of majesty. Okay? He wasn't worshipping. There's no idol worshipping here. There's no idol here. This is just a mound of earth that's used for offering and sacrifices. Remember, Obedience is better than sacrifice, but sacrifice is better than prayer. So as an evil man, you must always offer sacrifice at certain times of the year. You must do that. That is a requirement. Okay. I want to point this out. Like I said, I'm not looking for collaborators here, but it's nice when it happens, when when people, when things People you don't expect to be on your side say things that support what you've been saying. And that's clearly the number one. In Igbo land, we have a, a, a monotheism that was practiced in our land. And that God that we worship was represented by the sun. And again, our ancestors also are revered. When a good ancestor passes on, that it, it ascends the level of a DJ. They are revered in our community. In fact, there's something that happened in my village just this year, no, I'm sorry, last year, okay, a, a one young man like that, he, had, he was actually doing business in Lagos, but his ancestors were DBS, they were prophets. So he, he, the thing has been troubling him, so he came back. And when he came back, he predicted that somebody is going to die. One of the title holders was an evil man in our village. He said, look, the ancestors said, I should tell you that your cup is filled up. Tidy up your home, you're, go you're not going to survive. And we all thought it was a joke. The man died. Just a very minor sickness of that. And he didn't die smiling, to be honest with you. He died screaming. Screaming names of ancestors and was begging. And it didn't work. No matter the doctors he had access to, he died. So, the, those who know, they know, okay? They know that the level of the ancestors, they exist in the moon and they will always be there. Unfortunately, Brothers and sisters, the Bible gives us an opportunity to understand our culture. That's why I always say that we're very lucky. There are people who have lost their cultures and they've lost it forever. The Bible, the Old Testament Bible, for instance, gives us an opportunity to understand our culture. Because while the Europeans were stealing it, it gave us the opportunity. Most I use that as an opportunity for the future generation to understand what happened. Okay? So you see people today, you see Igbo people today, they will go to YouTube and begin to insult our ancestors that we are doing Osu, that we are so wicked, we are doing Osu. But they don't know that we initially was worshipping a god and then the Alosi kept on coming into People kept on bringing this abomination from other communities and then acclimatizing it to our land. And the only way our ancestors could stop this was to ostracize those who worship this Alosi. Because we don't worship them. It's, it's, never our, it's not our thing. It's not our God. Alosi is not part of Hebrew land. It's an abomination in Hebrew. That's why we do also. And that's still being done today. I mean, look, for instance, the Americans, any country that does not agree with their Herculean policies, they are ostracized. The Catholic Church today, if you don't obey the Pope, even though the Pope must never be obeyed, but if you don't obey the Pope, you are ostracized, you are excommunicated. That one is okay by those people, but the ones our ancestors did, yeah, hello. They will go to YouTube and start insulting our people. Again, I will have to warn you, Ndi Chie are there, they are taking notes. And don't forget what they tell you in the Bible that Ndi Chie are just singing hallelujah, hallelujah. No, our owns are not singing hallelujah. They are taking note of actions you're doing. And you cannot just come and insult the memory of our ancestors in vain. It doesn't happen that way. The, our God will fight for us. The God of our land, who instituted, who gave us commandments to keep and instituted it in our land, He will fight for us. Okay. I don't want to point this out there. May the most I bless brothers and sisters, whatever you're doing. Salam. So